The rise of energy costs in Europe and the impact of carbon emissions on our climate worldwide has IT leaders searching for ways to lower their energy consumption, in particular for enterprise-scale infrastructure that spans the data center, edge, and multiple clouds. Let's explore how we can accomplish this. Welcome to the Multi-Cloud Report. My name is Daniel Flaherty. I am the editorial lead for cross-cloud services at VMware. And today our focus is on energy consumption. In Europe, we're seeing the sometimes devastating impact of rising energy costs on business. With many manufacturers, for example, being forced to shut down portions of their factories to stay afloat. IT leaders are faced with similar pressure, with data center, edge, and public cloud infrastructure costs outpacing budgets, leading some to cancel projects and shut down portions of their infrastructure. Of course, these reductions have a negative impact on productivity, revenue, and the future growth driven by enterprise applications. And while this is felt most in Europe due to the high cost of energy, IT leaders worldwide are looking for strategies to lower their costs. So what can you do to reduce the energy consumption of your infrastructure and stay within budget? VMware has a long history of addressing this challenge by making IT infrastructure more efficient. We've helped our customers save 2.4 billion megawatts of energy and 1.2 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases since we were founded. So let's walk through three ways we can help today and show you how each works with a quick product demo. We'll start with a multi-cloud audit for waste and resource optimization. Then look at offloading to DPUs and finally replacing on-site disaster recovery with disaster recovery as a service. So recommendation number one is to use our cross-cloud service VMware Aria to audit for waste and resource optimization opportunities across your entire multi-cloud VMware infrastructure. Aria will look at workload efficiency, resource utilization, hardware efficiency, and more to find savings. Now let me introduce my colleague Dave to show you how it works. With the rising cost of energy across the globe, organizations are looking for ways to reduce their energy consumption while at the same time reduce their carbon footprint and run a more optimized data center. With a VMware cross-cloud services tool like ARIA Operations, companies have visibility into their entire cloud footprint and can see how efficient an operation they're running. If a data center is not running optimally, it can provide guidance on how to correct it. Looking at the ARIA Operations Sustainability Dashboard, a company can quickly see how efficient their infrastructure is based on three key areas, clean demand, lean operations, and green supply. The clean demand dashboards show how efficient the data center resources are. This can include the age of the hardware running the workloads. Newer hardware leads to more power efficient CPUs, which can lead to higher consolidation ratios and lower energy consumption. It also includes metrics on virtual machines that are powered off but still consuming disk space or VMs that are sitting idle but still consuming resources. Both lead to wasted resources and lower consolidation ratios. By optimizing the data center means there'll be less hardware needed to support it, which can lead to lowering your energy consumption and costs. Moving to lean operations, these dashboards are focused on how utilized your hardware is. Are the storage arrays under provisioned? or the clusters oversized for the workloads you're running. The green supply dashboard shows metrics on the energy source supplying the power to your data center and how efficient the hardware is. Are you using a physical array to provide storage? Or have you implemented vSAN as it consumes less power and takes up less space in the data center? Are you still using physical firewalls and load balancers? Or have you switched to a more modern software defined version from NSX? The Optimize tab can be used to quickly find ways to right-size VMs and data center resources, in this case, idle virtual machines. By selecting a data center, widgets will be presented with details on where those opportunities are and what the potential cost savings could be. Expanding a cluster and selecting the Idle Virtual Machines tab will show VMs that are powered on but have set idle for a specified period of time. While the energy consumption of a single VM may not be that significant, Collectively across the data center, this could lead to significant savings on energy consumption. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've seen how another tool in the cross cloud services portfolio can help you reduce your energy costs and consumption as you continue your journey to Cloud Smart. Thanks, Dave. Next up, you can use data processing units or DPUs 
to offload storage, network, security, and management services from your host, so you need less infrastructure to run your apps. Our partners at NVIDIA have found this to reduce overall power requirements by 29 to 45%. Let's turn back to Dave for a quick intro to the VMware software that runs DPUs, the Distributed Services Engine and vSphere. The cost of energy across the globe is soaring, and companies are not only looking for ways to reduce their energy consumption, but also be more power efficient in the data center. With VMware Distributed Services Engine and a supported DPU from a VMware partner, customers can offload infrastructure tasks that typically can tie up to 30% of a server's CPU cycles to a more efficient, specialized DPU. These DPUs are designed to be more power efficient and by running more compute tasks per watt of power than a traditional CPU. In fact, in a recent report published by NVIDIA, this can reduce a server's power consumption up to 30%. But what does that mean in real numbers? In a larger data center with 10,000 servers, this could mean a savings of $5 million over the three-year lifespan of the servers. This is in addition to savings in cooling, power delivery, rack space, and capital costs. It also means lower latency and higher throughput for today's modern applications. Let's take a look at creating a distributed switch and offloading the networking functions to a DPU. In this example, we have three ESXi hosts with DPUs installed, and the vCenter server has also been added to NSX Manager. As we walk through the process of creating a distributed switch, You'll notice it's nearly identical to creating one without a DPU. In the Configure Settings section, there's a drop-down option where the type of DPU card can be selected. From there, the process is the same. Once the task is complete, we can add host to the distributed switch. One thing to note is that since we created the switch to support DPUs, a compatibility check is going to be run on the host to see if they have the card installed. From there, the process is the same. We can assign uplinks, manage the VM kernel adapters as we normally would, and now the three ESXi hosts have been added to the distributed switch, supporting the DPU's network offload function and helping your business reduce energy consumption and be more power efficient. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've seen how another tool in the cross-cloud services portfolio can help you reduce your energy costs and consumption as you continue your journey to Cloud Smart. Thanks, Dave. And our final top recommendation for reducing your IT infrastructure energy consumption is to get rid of on-site disaster recovery and shift to disaster recovery as a service in a hyperscale cloud. This shift, which removes your on-site hardware and uses an on-demand failover model in a public cloud, can reduce the power consumption you need for DR by 87%. For a data center with 500 VMs, for example, that's a reduction of around 380 megawatt hours annually. Now, let's check in with my colleague Simon to see how this works. Thank you, Dan. Although many organizations realize the importance of implementing a robust DR solution for reasons such as business continuity, compliance, ransomware, and security breaches, traditional DR solutions can be complex, expensive, and not scale or provide the required levels of protection. Leveraging the elasticity of cloud computing, VMware Cloud DR spins up AWS infrastructure only during a DR testing or failover event. Getting started with VMware DR to AWS is easy. Here is Senior Technical Marketing Architect Michael McCaughlin with a quick look at the service. Cloud Disaster Recovery now provides several options for protecting your production site workloads to VMware Cloud on AWS for DR purposes. What this means is that whether your VMware environment is in an on-prem data center or already in VMware Cloud on AWS, you can leverage a subscription-based solution with cloud economics, broader geographic availability, and elastic resource scalability to support your DR needs as a service. Let's take a closer look. From the VMware Cloud DR dashboard, we can see the current operational status and topology, which already includes the scale-out cloud file system, which holds the immutable snapshot backup copies 
of your VMs safely off-site and ready for recovery. The DRSDDC site for failover, either in a pilot light, minimal, always on footprint, as we see here, or in a just-in-time, on-demand approach, if you have less stringent recovery time SLAs and tighter infrastructure budgets. Multiple protected sites already configured, some of them in on-prem vCenter data centers, one of them in another SDDC in VMware Cloud on AWS. Let's walk through the steps to see how easily we can set up another protected site in another AWS region. Simply go to the Sites view and choose to set up a new protected site. From here, you can choose an on-prem vSphere site or a VMware Cloud on AWS location, which we will pick for this demonstration. You are guided through the selection of available sites within your organization. Here we see our existing recovery site, an already protected SDDC, and another available SDDC in another region that can be configured into this DR setup. For this setup, we'll let VMware Cloud DR configure the firewall updates needed for the two sites to properly connect to enable the protection. Once the networks are updated and the site is accessible, it's a simple process to deploy the DRAS connector into the source location SDDC. This OVA deployment follows the same setup process, whether on-prem or in the cloud. Once the connector is in place, you are ready to begin building protection group policies that will be used for the DR from this new protected site to the DR site in VMware Cloud on AWS. With this new capability, it is even easier to protect your existing VMware environments, both on-prem and in VMC, to another VMware-based DR site, in this case, in VMware Cloud on AWS. So reducing the energy requirements of your infrastructure is essential today, especially in Europe, but it's also important for the sustainability of how we all run our applications in the future to optimize spend and protect our climate. Now I should note, energy reduction isn't the only way you can save money here. You can also migrate your on-premises workloads to a hyperscale cloud without changing them at all using VMware Cloud, which has a lower overall TCO than on-prem. So if you work with VMware technologies or are interested in diving deeper, check out the hands-on labs we have linked in the description. And for the IT leaders in the audience, head over to the cross-cloud services page on VMware.com to keep learning. Thank you for your time.